my, my reflection uh, today goes in a bit different, more theoretical uh, direction. I want to um, I, I want to outline um, um, a line of thoughts that goes from from a, a certain um, uh, a certain um, epistemological questions on uh, climate crisis and ontological uh, questions of the object of climate crisis. Uh, and I finish with a with reflection on the ethics, particularly on the possibility of um, ethical involvement of artistic um, uh, practices. So uh, two, two of the dominant uh, crises today, I think basically have the similar structure in one way. Um, both the COVID crisis and, and the en environmental crisis are fundamentally also epistemic crisis. And they're fundamentally also the, the crisis of um, objectivity. And we can say that they're also um, ontological crisis. As you know, just to, 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 to picture the situation uh, um, on, the, on the field of, uh, on the level of epistemic crisis, um, we are constantly asking today who holds the authority to to inform us on the objective facts of the epidemics or, or on the climate crisis? Is this, are, are the scientists, is this democratic or not so democratic governments? Is this, does this authority lie in, uh, in the community of well-informed citizen scientists and not so well-informed citizen scientists? Uh, and the same is with, with the environmental or climate crisis. Proper, proper um, scientific community is constantly changed by so-called skeptics or deniers, which are usually financially backed uh, from, from the shadow by fossil fuel capital. Um, uh, and, um, and, 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 uh, and there is also, I mean, it's, it's very closely connected with epist epistemic question is a question of, of object, objectivity, of the object of this, those crises. What kind of objects are those uh, crisis objects? They're, they're, they're definitely not, I mean, the, the COVID epidemics or, or uh, the environmental crisis is definitely not the kind of object as, uh, for example, my, 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 my cat or, or, or a coffee mug. Um, they're not everyday phenomenolog phenomenological objects. Uh, they're, 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 they're abstract, uh, they're, they're usually presented as abstract objects like, well, we saw them, uh, we, saw, we, we already saw those charts. For example, um, the killing curve, the famous killing curve uh, on the, on the uh, up left, uh, which of course, uh, charts the, the concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere and it's, 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 it's basically the, 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 the birthplace of uh, climate science killing discovered uh, the, the global warming, uh, the global warming when, when he charted, first charted this, uh, this curve and, and, and on, on the right of course is a, is a, is a hockey stick curve uh, uh, and, and, and again, another chart, which, which presents the COVID situation, which we all know. And, and the, the, the question is, how do we relate to, to, to this crisis object? The, for example, COVID crisis, we, we constantly, every day, we look at those charts and, and we try to grasp their ab abstraction uh, to a kind of objectivity, uh, which constantly slips away from us. Uh, and uh, we can also not it, 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 we can we, we can also not solve this situation by uh, by um, returning to um, uh, empirical experience because even on a, on a, on a level of personal uh, uh, physical experience we we, we 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 face the question how do you experience for example the global warming object. Uh, it's so complex. It's so multi, multi, multi-dimensional uh, experience. On the one hand, there, we, we go to climate protests. On the other hand, we experience unusually warm summer. 
or we can experience the unusually cold summer, cold, cold spring, as, as we do today in Slovenia. Um, it is like some, some climat climatologists like to say, it's a global weirding. It's not just global warming, but it's also global weirding. But of course, global warming is real. It will kill us if we don't address it properly. But is it an object or what kind of object is it? Um, so from the, from the ontological and epistemological point of view, we face a kind of dilemma. Do we, do we, um, do we resort to a kind of postmodern uh, constructivism and say these objects are all socially constructed or today we can say Facebook constructed? On the one hand, or on the other hand, are we um, kind of resorting to, to scientific abstractions? And we say there is, of course, uh, a deeper layer of reality behind all this, but we cannot grasp it in the other way than through uh, scientific abstractions, such as those curves. So this is the dilemma. Is it constructed or is it abstraction from the deeper layer of reality? But we can we can we can present the third option so to say some of the so some 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 line of thoughts are presenting the third option um and the thir third option is that um that this crisis objects COVID or or or, or global warming are indeed uh, objects proper they are objects but of course they are not objects in in a way as uh, cats and mugs are uh, they're objects, um, they're weird objects. Uh, they're weird objects, or as, uh, as my, my reference here, um, philosopher Timothy Morton says, they are, um, they're hyper objects. Now, um, for the next part of this presentation, I will have to go just briefly through uh, Morton's proposition on the basic um, basic features of ontology of hyper objects. So the, the idea is the thesis is that the, uh, the the crisis object is hyper object. So what are those for 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 Morton the basic features ontological features of hyper objects? For example, one feature is viscosity, and uh, viscosity is, uh, is 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 the um, is the feature that uh, um, describes this uh, impossibility of distancing from the object. Um, I can distance from my cat. Well, sometimes I can, usually it just sticks with me, but I cannot distance from, from uh, climate, climate change. I cannot distance from radiation. I cannot distance from, from epidemics. It's kind of gluey, it's viscous, it stays around me. Another feature is non-locality. Uh, uh, you cannot you cannot place uh, exactly place the epidemics or or a climate change. Uh, it's 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 kind of non-local non-local and um, uh, in, in a way that physicists describe non-locality in quantum mechanics. Uh, it, another, another the third feature is temporal undulation, um, and. Um, uh, we 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 had this great we heard this great uh, great presentation uh, by Andre uh, on on uh, on this uh, um, uh, glaciers glaciers are typical uh, objects that temporarily undulate they they don't they they're not they they don't live live only in present their 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 uh, existence is kind of extended through through tem temporal uh, dimension in a, in a, again in a weird way sometimes uh, and also this this goes with the with the climate and environmental cli crisis which cannot be properly thought of if we don't put it in a in a extended uh, temporal dimension because it, it, it affects it it, it, it it not only uh, it's it's not just proper to say it affects our 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 our, our um, children, uh, but they, 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 they are already in the climate crisis. The people who don't live yet are already in a way involved in this strange temporal dimension in the climate crisis. Uh, another feature, uh, well, I don't have much time left, it's phasing. That means that uh, what I was describing at the beginning, um, it's not possible to, to grasp 
global warming in in the one one uh, one one look uh, you you are always um, destined to see a fragment dimension or a part of of this whole uh, uh, object hyper strange hyper object it, it, it kind of phases uh, through your um, visual or or sensual field and the last the last uh, the, the last uh, morton's uh, ontological feature of hyper objects is interobjectivity. Uh, it's, 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 it's even more uh, difficult to explain briefly, but um, in short, in this short uh, time, but it, 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 it connects with the, you know, with, with the, what, what is called object oriented philosophy. And um, it's, it, it kind of reverses the, the old philosophical subject object problem. Uh, um, it's not the subject who communicates with the object or who, who perceives object, but there are objects communicating with objects. And it's, uh, it's very important in the context of Morton's uh, ecological philosophy or philosophy of, of Anthropocene, which basically, which, which radically reverses anthropocentric and uh, even humanistic way of thinking human nature uh, relation. So basically in... in mm, in the perspective of interobjectivity, humans are objects in interaction with with uh, with other objects, and this is the, the the deeper truth of ecology. Okay, so um, oh, <laughs> going back to to our initial question, so the, the connection of environmental crisis with epistemic crisis and ontological crisis uh, of objectivity. Well. Um, one conventional way of tackling this is ethics, uh, this ontological, ontological and, uh, and, uh, and um, um, epistemic crisis. Um, ethics of science um, has a relatively few um, um, uh, well-established principles, but they all uh, more or less derive from one fundamental imperative, uh, which is uh, actually the only uh, ethical imperative that is truly intrinsic to the practice of science. And that is the imperative of truthfulness. Scientists, uh, science or scientists must follow the truth. All other well-established principles of ethics of science are derived from here. For, for example, freedom of scientific research, um, uh, the principle that the results of the science must be public, the principle of honesty and integrity, in using, for example, uh, or in using or publishing data and so on and so on. But my, my point here is, my key point here is that there is perhaps another more radical ethical situation um, where, um, where, 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 where scientists is because of a certain moral reason compelled to become directly social, polit socially, politically or, or an environmentally active. So something that compels uh, scientists, some kind of ethical motivation that compels scientists to become to become activists. <laughs> and um, uh, 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 here, here is, in, in my view, this is the paradigmatic case. It's a Einstein case. This is famous Einstein's letter from uh, 1939, uh, when Einstein urged Roosevelt to build uh, for America to build an atom bomb. Otherwise, the Germany will do it first. Uh, and America, of course, did build an atomic bomb. This is historically a very complex and very interesting story because it may even be that Einstein was de deliber deliberately misled by false information about how advanced the German atomic program is. But it's not important, so important here. Because very soon, as we know, uh, Einstein reversed his position and he became the greatest critic of atomic weapon and nuclear pro pro proliferation. In any case, or in both cases, we sense this Einstein's deep inside, his, this profound revelation that he experienced when he mentally realized this naked reality of this object, of this hyper object of atomic bomb. bomb is, atomic bomb is paradigmatic hyper object. It's, it, it is viscous. Uh, the radiation are all around us. We, we cannot distance from it. It's non local. Atomic weapons impact every, everything around us and affect all places. It temporarily undulates. It doesn't affect only present, the atomic bomb, but the future as a whole, and so on and so on. And 
because I, my time is running up, I must, I, I will just say that uh, uh, basically the structure of global environmental crisis is just like that. Now, for, for just for, for finish this, let's try to expand this analogy to art. Now, I don't believe that there is something like ethics of art in the strict sense, at least not in the art of modernity. There is perhaps a difference here with the, with the pre-modern Christian art or other forms of non-European art of this type, but not in, not in the strict sense uh, as the uh, ethics of science. Also, there are certainly very strong ethical systems within uh, certain artistic groups or artistic movements or individual artists. And I would call this a local ethics. Um, local ethics, uh, and, and this is in no, by no means in the diminishing sense, just in the sense that it, it's local ethics, just in the sense that we cannot expand this part of analogy uh, to the universal ethics of scientific community. We cannot expand it directly to the art or the art community if there is even such thing, such thing as an art community uh, uh, in, in the sense of scientific community. But so, so on the one hand, we don't have universal uh, artistic ethics, art ethics, as science ethics, but we do have a local, local ethics. And I, I think maybe the, the, the work that, that uh, Marietica Potarj does, I see this in a kind of way of, that represents uh, the, the, the local, let's call it local ethics. But on the other hand, I think that the part of analogy with science holds because art is not platonic. It's, it's never been mere representation or mere reproduction. Art is the objective production. And it is, if I can, if I can use the concept from, um, from Morton's ontology, the art is fundamentally interobjective. It's production of the objects in a way that the objects communicate with one or another. And now, this is my last <laughs> sentence, and I'm speculating from here because I'm not, I'm, I'm by no means the artistic producer. I'm just, I'm just a user. <laughs> and uh, I reflect, uh, I, I, um, I, um, I, I reflect on, on the reason um, that, that sometimes the, the artist can be also drawn to environmental, uh, in environmental activism in a way uh, that is similar to the way uh, to the way uh, Einstein was pulled into his activism uh, when he encountered the the reality, the naked the naked ob objectivity of uh, of atom bomb uh, atom bomb uh, hyper object. Uh, because of this uh, universal feature of interobjectivity of artistic production. I think it has, but this is mere speculation from my side, I think it has the access to, to this naked objectivity also, to the hyperobjectivity. And from, from this cross-section, from the cross-section of uh, certain local ethics, which are by themselves, uh, I think, very, very interesting fields of research and, and I had, I had to just mention them, but I think from the point of view of environmental art, this is the crucial point. So on the one hand, we have this local, local ethics uh, uh, or groups of local ethics. On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, this, um, this access to, to, to hyper objectivity. And from this cross section, I think um, uh, arises uh, the greatest potential of um, environmental art, uh, of in environmental art as a, as, a, as a creation of new possibilities in this weird new ecologies that constitute the Anthropocene we are living in.